Okay, special week for a lot of reasons. Obviously, you know, one of the more of historic rivalries in all of college football. And, um, you know, I think it's a privilege to be an opportunity of that, you know, for not only our players but the entire organization. You know, this is a game that matters 24-7, 365. Uh, we're certainly excited about being in the swamp uh, Saturday night, uh, sold out crowd. I think that's five straight uh, for Gator Nation, so we're very thankful for that. Uh, it's also senior day for a, a group. This will be their last opportunity to play um, at the swamp, and certainly, you know, this is a group uh, that's done a lot of good in their time. Uh, it's, we've seen a lot of growth uh, out of a lot of these young people. Uh, we're having Tim Tebow back uh, to recognize him for his College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, certainly, you know, one of the best Gators to have ever done it, and it uh, be awesome to have Tim back uh, this weekend. It's also Thanksgiving this week, and uh, I think there's an element of perspective and gratitude here that I think we all can benefit from, and certainly we've kind of started some of the things that we do with the players uh, this week. So, you know, I think in weeks like this, it's important that uh, every person uh, within the organization and the team understands that their role matters. Um, and I think it's important that we, you know, the, the people in leadership, uh, players in particular, they need to go out of their way and be vocal about that uh, and making sure that everyone knows that. I think there is something uh, special about being a part of something larger than yourself. Um, I think football creates that opportunity. Uh, and we have to remember, you know, I was talking to uh, the accountability group just a while ago, you know, I think you got to ask your question, uh, what, do, what does our team need from, from me, right? Uh, and certainly weeks like this, I think that's magnified a little bit. So, you know, you're in a position to serve. Ultimately, I think leadership's about service um, and ch really challenge those guys, you know, between now uh, and Tuesday, you know, what does, the need team, what does the team need from you and what are you going to bring to the table throughout the week? So, you know, we control how we prepare. We can never lose sight of that. I think it's important that we, um, given the dynamic of this game, certainly the two quarterbacks and the, the situation there, I think there's going to be an element of that. So we control our energy. We control our attitude. We control how we prepare. Uh, we all understand the importance and magnitude of the rivalry game uh, and certainly an incredible opportunity for our team to play against a, you know, a well thought of Florida State football team. So what questions do we have here? Does the practice schedule alter with uh, Thanksgiving or does it at all? Yeah, we'll slide things back briefly on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, to grab a little bit of additional time, knowing that Thursday we move everything up three hours. Uh, so we just exchange a little bit of time there, um, add a little bit to the back end on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we grab some time uh, so that we can speed things up on Thursday. We try to be out of the building by 4 o'clock Thursday and give the players an opportunity to spend time. If they have family in town or family nearby locally, and if not, most of these guys will go to their position coach's house. Within the schedule change because of the, the change at quarterback now? Uh, I think, you know, ultimately, you know, we just have to, we have to play a brand of football that, you know, relative to Max and his experience, what he knows, um, you know, and what he's got confident in, right? And I think we still got to feature the players that we know are important each week. Uh, but ultimately, every offense that I've ever been a part of starts with what the quarterback can do well, right? So um, that'll be part of the plan. No different than they're going to be going through some of the same dynamics. Graham doing on this collarbone? Yeah, so Graham is um, – we, we took another image yesterday. Uh, we felt good about that image. You know, he um, – you know, we're going to basically go in a two-week period here where we're going to give the chance um, for the fracture to start the process of growing back. And then, 
then we'll reevaluate things. You know, I think in the meantime, we're going to do exhaustive research on like cases, um, you know, in college football and in the National Football League relative to players that have been through similar injuries, just making sure we're giving him the best map, you know, for him going forward with the rest of his career. Dealing with it and, and having something like this happen, especially late in the year. Yeah, no, Graham is uh, mature. You know, I think he's really bright. He's got, you know, he's um, much like any great competitor. I think he obviously wishes he was able to do everything he could do for the team. But, um, you know, he's going to be around and he'll still contribute to the team in the ways that he can. But, um, yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, I think injuries, sometimes for players, those are the most – uh, some of the more challenging things that you go through, right? Because, you know, you think about things that you could do differently, but ultimately a lot of these things, it's just, you know, it is what it is. So, um, you know, I think he's done a terrific job for our team. You know, I think he'll continue to do that. What was, uh, what was kind of your impression of what you saw from Tate Rodemaker, their, their now starting quarterback, when you watched him on film? Yeah, no, I, I've got a long-standing history with um, – Rodemaker, his dad is a longtime friend of my dad's. Um, and I, when I was growing up, heck, his coach Rodemaker was always around at different events and camps and things that we go to. So uh, I think we even started the recruiting process a little bit with him at Louisiana. So, um, you know, he's a coach's son. Uh, He's very bright. He's got – this is a fourth year in the system, right? So he got there in 20. Uh, so, I mean, he's acquired reps throughout his time there. He'll have a good grasp of what they do. A little bit different type of player, but certainly he's got his strengths. Um, and they've got terrific skill around him, right? So, um, you know, they'll, they'll be an element of experience. You know, I think that's the big thing. Um, and he's played – I think if you go back to the Louisville game last year, he had to step in there and play, and certainly he's played a lot. When the games have been in control, they've put him in there. So there's a pretty good sample size of him playing. What struck you about Max's demeanor the other night? Yeah, no, I think Max kind of did what I thought he would do. You know, I think Max is a competitor. Uh, he's got a – he's got a level of belief in himself. You know, he's always been a very confident guy. Um, and, you know, uh, for the most part, I think we had the one ball exchange, you know, the ball handling issue. Uh, outside of that, you know, he did what he was supposed to do, you know, and I think um, we changed gears a little bit there to try to give, help him out, and I think um, critical fourth down throw, you know, into a tight window, and then he threw a nice ball outside on the double move, so um, – you know, first plays in there, he throws a strike to Ricky on the, the naked. So, um, you know, he did a lot of good things. You know, he's been working hard since the first day he's gotten here. He's improved. Um, and I'll tell you, I think the players have a – there's a – you know, he's got good connection and camaraderie with the players. So, I think um, they see him every day. They know who he is and what he's capable of. The margin for error. I mean, we know the team, it's, it's slight. Mm -hmm. What are a couple things maybe down the stretch that stood out to you? One that has been talked about is Trevor not getting out of bounds. Like, what was he told? Yeah. And that, that cost you guys some. Yeah. You know, yeah some, no, I think it. Yeah, it's something. And you said you were going to review. Yeah. No, I think um, there's a handful of situational calls in the game. Obviously, Trevor knows not to run out of bounds. You know, I mean, I think it's a simple mistake there. Um, and I think the. The grounding penalty before the half was a missed opportunity, in my opinion. You know, we're, we're about, you know, I would say 10 or 15 yards away from the kick line there. Um, so Graham obviously can do better there. And then I think the fourth and 17 call, you know, we just got to do a little bit better job in the hook areas of the field. You know, we've got players there. I think just, you know, there's players in position there. We just have to have a little bit more awareness. Um, and we can execute the rush plan a little bit better. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, there's there's 12 to 15 plays in that game, I think, that impacted the end result. When you, when you lose these games by 
these point totals, you know, it's all magnified, right? So um, every possession counts. You know, we're talking about 12 possessions a game on average for both sides of the ball. You know, I think each one of those where you don't maybe get the results you want, there's something in that possession that you can point to uh, that you can do better. So, I mean, that's who we, that's where we're at as a program. You know, every time we put the ball down, no matter who the opponent is, you know, that, that margin of error that you're talking about, I think that's, that's who we are. That's where we're at. Every, every play counts. Every possession counts. Another year of eligibility, obviously, you know, we're not going to be able to speak to him because of injury, but what indication do you get as far as, you know, him wanting to be back with the program and so forth and the yeah, decision no. he's going to have to make in his future? Sure. I, you know, I'll let him handle that. You know, much like we've done with players in the past, uh, they have their process that they want to go through, and out of respect for that, we're going to allow them to do that. But, um, you know, Graham has been fantastic, and, um, you know, again, we'll let him, how how does he want to announce his decision, how does he want to go about that, we'll, we'll let him do that. Different or, or different is the play calling with Max, obviously, uh, he has a running ability that maybe is the only quarterback in the room that has that. And how do you adjust what you've done all year with Graham to better fit Max for this week? Yeah, you know, I think, um, yeah, I mean, that's what we do, right? I mean, I think we take every offense that you have evolves based off of what the quarterback's really good at. Um, and certainly Max is a little bit different type of player, right? They're, they're kind of going – uh, from Jordan Travis to Rodemaker, you know, we're going from Graham Mertz to Max Brown, right? So there's an element of change for both teams. Uh, and certainly, you know, that's part of the strategy relative to the game. Back to fourth and 17. Do you, I know it's hindsight, but you wish you maybe brought pressure there instead of playing. Was it, was it sticks defense? Was it pattern match? What was it? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think um, sticks defense. Define that for me. Well, rush four. The rest of everybody else, don't let anybody behind you and make try to make the tackle in front of the sticks. Yeah. No, I think, um, you know, we, we called what we called, and I think we have players in the area of the completion. I think we need to do a little bit better job distributing in our zones. Um, we did rush four. Um, and, look, I think, Hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, I mean, there's other options, right? Um, and I think we spend a ton of time on these fourth down, got to have it scenarios. And I think we went with what we thought was best at the time, right? So, um, you know, oftentimes it's not about what you do; it's how you do it. And there's there's a coaching and player element to both, if that makes sense. From a recruiting standpoint, there's always been a debate on. These in-state rivalries, like one team wins and it impacts recruiting one way or the other with kids. And obviously, there's been a lot of chatter lately about keeping your recruiting class together through these struggling. How big of a concern is that right now? With, with that, have you noticed any impact of these decisions being based on struggles lately? Yeah, no, I, you know, I think um, one of the things that's been interesting about this group that we have committed is I think they – they understand where we're at relative to our current dynamic. You know, I mean, I think there's in part of the pitch and in the conversation, I think there is, you know, there's a desire to be a part of something being built. You know, I mean, how do we get Florida back to where it's been before? You know, we have to acquire um, really good groups of players back to back to back, you know, and I think, um, there's a good relationship between this class and some of the younger players on our team. I think there's some key people within each of those groups. Um, and look, you know, anytime you struggle as a program, um, there's an element of that that affects recruiting. There's no doubt about it. But there's also, a, you know, you're early in your tenure. You know, I think there's a reality relative to the big picture. Uh, and I think some are up for the challenge, you know, and I think that there's a, this is a unique place and a special place, right? So, um, you know, it's a great group, you know, and I think uh, they're made of the right stuff. They're up for the challenge. And, you know, I think recruiting is always a battle, 
you know. I mean, I, I don't know that it's ever been easy, you know. So, um, you know, we're trying to recruit elite players in every position. You know, we have a number of them committed. And, um, you know, we got about a month or so to get to the finish line. And I think um, I've been pleased with their response, let me put it that way. You know, and I think uh, ultimately they have relationships with the players on our team. And that gives them insight to what, what's it like here, what's taking place here. Uh, and I think that gives you some, you know, gives me some confidence, if that makes sense. So we all understand you got to stack several groups back to back to get to where you want to go, right? So we're in the process of doing that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, winning and losing affects recruiting. Momentum affects recruiting, right? There's no doubt about it. So. Uh, but we've got a great experience to sell here and one that I think people have confidence and belief in. So you guys are a game-winning kick against Arkansas in a fourth and 17 stop away from being seven and four. But do you think that this team is better than its record is right now? You know, um, I think we are a team. I mean, I think it goes back to Edgar's comment early, earlier, right? I think we're a, key, a team that can be competitive with about anybody, if that makes sense. We're capable um, of beating anybody, and a anybody's capable of beating us, if that makes sense. I mean, I think that's kind of who we are. You know, I think our struggles have been inconsistency. You know, we have, we're yet to put it together, you know, a dominant performance in all three parts of our team. Uh, some of that is it. You know, injuries, lack of depth, youth. I mean, we're not going to allow, you know, we're not going to allow excuses to creep into what we're trying to accomplish, if that makes sense. You know, we, we're trying to improve. We're trying to get the most out of our players, right? And I think it's a fun team to coach because we got some veteran players that are just awesome um, in their approach, attitude, leadership, um, they've maintained energy, uh, the work ethic, the practice habits. Um, and then we got a lot of guys that don't, they don't know any different, right? I mean, we got a lot of young cats that are just showing up and it's like, what's next? You know, so, um, you know, and I think there's some things about that that you respect. Um, so, look, you know, we are what our, our record indicates, you know, we've come up short, you know, in a handful of games. So, and we, we can coach better and play better. You know, that's what I think about. You know, I think we, we, I'm thinking about things we can do. I'm going back to that question that I'm asking our accountability group. What does our team need from you now? You know, and ultimately we're in the service business, right? We got to do our, we got to do the best job we can do for our people. Um, from a leadership standpoint, both the players and all parts of the organization, right? So, um, you know, I can tell you that this is a resilient group, um, just being around them the last couple of days. Um, you know, we went to, went to Missouri and competed, you know, played our butt off and uh, not perfect. You know, we got work to do in that area, but Motivation can be a challenge uh, week to week with these with any team. But uh, is it easier this week, given bowl eligibility is at stake? You can knock your rival out. Senior day, night game in the swamp, all those. Yeah. Does that make it easier? I mean, I think. Um, yeah, all of those are external, but they they have impact, right? There's no question about it, and I think. You know, when you lose a couple in a row, you know, you're looking for buttons to push, you know. And uh, I think this week provides some of that, if that makes sense. Um, we haven't had that problem, you know. So I think for me, that's one of the, been the, it's one of the blessings about this team is that we don't, we don't necessarily have that issue. I'm not looking for some secret formula to get them to play hard. You know, I mean, I think there's – some intangibles and loyalty that's been developed. They wanna, they wanna do their job and do their best for each other, you know. Um, so, 
we just need to do our job a little bit better, you know. Um, that's the key. Back to recruiting, you talk about stacking the elite level classes, but how do you, or what's your philosophy on the transfer portal? Is that viewed more as supplemental year to year and focus on high school, or how do you mix the yeah. two? Yeah, I mean, I think holistically, uh, much like, I think the NFL analogy is realistic, right? I think the, you want to build your team through the draft. Um, you want to add quality players through free agency that fit and that maybe fill needs. Um, you know, and I think ultimately that's the approach that we've taken. That's the approach we'll continue to take. Um, and I look, this I've said this to you guys many times, right? This math problem changes every day, right? So. Um, we may not have a salary cap, but we do have roster number, you know, limitations, right? So that's the cap, you know. Um, so I think ultimately it's it's a fluid dynamic. But, I mean, there's no question, you know, I mean, I, I view it very much like free agency, no different. We go get a Ricky Pearsall at receiver. We go get a Graham Mertz at quarterback. You know, we go get – I mean, there's a number of – examples of that right so um, you know you got to evaluate your team annually you know if that makes sense much like the National Football League does relative to what do you need you know um, it's it's often it's it's almost like the old junior college model you know you used to go get players at positions where you had depth issues or you needed a significant impact player right now that this game's evolved and now the portal provides that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think ultimately that's the way I view it. You want to build your team through the draft, want to retain players, want to develop players, and then obviously there's positions of need along the way and you go get them through the portal.